Hey there, uh, continuing some informal coverage of the Surface Laptop Studio 2. And I have it right here. Uh, you can see uh, some of the things have changed. I have put this uh, wrap on it, which I always tend to do. This is a lunar gray. So like that a lot. That's a Sophie Guard, Soapy Guard uh, wrap. It's for the Laptop Studio 1. And you can see there is a slight size difference um, in the machine because the edges on this piece don't quite reach all the way to the edge on the Laptop 2. So it is slightly bigger, the Laptop Studio 2. Uh, but we already knew that. Uh, so in this video, I just wanted to go over, I got a lot of questions on my video. If you haven't seen that uh, throttling characteristic video, uh, go take a look at it. It's got a funny intro in it that it was I like a lot. <laughs> but uh, let's look at people wanted to see comparisons, comparisons to the X16 and the X13. So I've had some time to play with the Laptop Studio 2 a little more, and I wanted to show you some benchmarks and comparisons to other devices. So let's take a look at that, and I'll just talk you through that. Again, this is very impromptu. This is, I'm not gonna like post this anywhere other than on my channel, so. Uh, let's take a look. Think of this as a live stream that's recorded or something. <laughs> but, um, so let's, let's first, for fun, look, here's the Surface Book 315 with the 1660 Ti in it. And if you look at that, look at the Time Spy score. It got a 4962. And uh, then we moved to the Laptop Studio and I was the one of the people saying, well, this is not really an upgrade. Well, look, it went from 4962 to 5025. That's like literally nothing. So Surface Laptop Studio, not that great of an upgrade over Surface Book 3. So uh, now we finally have the Laptop Studio 2, and it is a huge upgrade. Let's look and see what that looks like. So here it is here, Surface Laptop Studio 2, our Time Spy. Sorry, these are Time Spy scores. I should have prefaced that, but our Time Spy score is 10K. It's 9997, but 9997 versus the highest I ever got on Laptop Studio One was 5251. A literal doubling of performance when you're using it at stock. So yeah, so that's really good. Um, that is with the 4060 mobile that you see right here. If you wanna compare that to the Z13 with the 4070 in it, um, the acronym Z13, that's right here. You can see it's just slightly faster. Uh, 10K times by it's 10048 and 12595. It's basically neck and neck. And we're gonna see that, and I, and I mentioned this in, in my preview video as well, then that is an 80 watt 4060 is about on par with a 65 watt 4070. And that's what I'm seeing across the board. And what that means is it's pretty on par with the Z13 and the X13 with the 4070 chips in it. Um, but let's look, what else is in here? Uh, the Surface Pro 9 with the 4070 eGPU. So that's a desktop GPU on the Surface Pro 9. Uh, you can see it did 11K. And Zenbook Pro 14 OLED. This is, this is one of my favorite devices, surprise favorite devices this year, the Zenbook Pro 14 OLED. This was the 4060 model, and it did 11.2K, so really performant. Uh, so it just had a better graphics score. It can get 11K times by rather than 10K times by. And some of that is it's a 100-watt it's a uh, GPU versus this 80-watt GPU. So, I mean, that is what it is. And um, let's look at... What else do we have in here? Uh, let's look at Final Fantasy scores. So Final Fantasy Benchmark XV. Um, let's go ahead and keep going down because it is near the top of the list here. Okay, here's the Surface Laptop Studio 2. And this is in, so here is my Final Fantasy. And here are the scores in order from lowest to highest. And it's, it's right around a 2022X13 with an XG Mobile. So it's beating an XG Mobile from, from last year. Um, versus the 
the 2023 X13 with the 4070 mobile just behind that. So that had 11,694. And, but that was overclocked. That was with a GPU bump of 200 megahertz. But when I updated the Surface Laptop Studio 2 to also have a 200 megahertz bump, it actually beat it, it did a 12,000. So 12,000 with a, with a little bit of an overclock on the Surface Laptop Studio 2 in this Final Fantasy benchmark, it puts it on par with a G14 from 2022 with a 6800S. Uh, basically kind of on par with, uh, with the X2022 X16, which had a 3070Ti in it. Um, not quite as good as... I mean, I got better scores with the 2023 X13. It got a 13282. And again, the ZenBook Pro 14 OLED, 14,200. So a step above, not enough that you, I mean, 14,000 uh, versus 12,000 and change. I don't know if you'd notice too much of a difference in that. Um, but. Yeah, it is, it is what it is. And of course, the one topping the charts right now is that 2023 X16 with a 4070 in it, which got 16,154. So the X16 definitely is more performant than the Laptop Studio 2. But that's to be expected. It has more, I think that that's like a, I can't remember now, but I think it's a 120 watt GPU. So it should be performing quite a bit better. Um, the benefits of the... Uh, Laptop Studio 2, obviously, is the tablet form factor, the fact you can swap it into the tablet mode, and the pen. So the pen works a lot better than the Asus pens, and even more so than I thought. And shout out to Tablet Pro because he's, I mean, he's, if you haven't seen his channel, we've done a few videos together, and... Um, he knows how to use a pen way better than I just kind of scribble, but uh, he, he he's done you know palm rejection, quality of the line. It's it's a much better experience on a Surface device than it has been on those Asus devices because he's got the Z13 and he's had a few issues with it uh, for pen usage. So if you want tablet and pen, this is the better device. But if you aren't concerned about that. I would definitely consider the X16 uh, if you need that tablet form factor. And if you want a screen that you could write on and is touch screen, that ZenBook Pro 14 OLED is a great device. I It's so performant. It's actually very light even compared to this. This is like 4.37 pounds. The ZenBook Pro 14 OLED I think is like three and a half pounds, so almost a pound lighter than this thing. I mean, it's a really good device. I like I like that a lot, but, you know, I think I, I really am enjoying my laptop studio too. Now, let's look. I had some issues, and let's talk about the issues that I had. Um, the issues I had with this device was suddenly, and, and I almost thought I was going to have to retract my video, because suddenly as I was playing with it today, I was getting very poor for performance and I didn't know why. I was suddenly throttling down to like the GPU was, you know, it'd go to 60 for a second and then it would go down to 40 watts and sometimes like 35 and I would get weird stutters and I did not know what was going on and I was worried. I was like, did I just not run my test long enough? Did, did, does it actually start to throttle really bad? because it was, it was throttling on me today. And uh, I found that it must have just been some sort of firmware glitch because I did a, you know, a shutdown, uh, took out the power cable, put the power cable back in. It did get some firmware updates, so I think that's probably what it was. Um, but after I did that, all the performance came back and I wanted to show you guys uh, some of those graphs because uh, I have them visualized here. Let's take a look at this. So I think this is more properly defining the throttling characteristics of the device. So if you can see this right here, I, I this is a 15 minute window where I am just pegging the, the GPU with Furmark on not only a GPU load this time, but also a CPU load. 
And what I did was I measured the total system power. So I've got the total system power here, and that's a really good uh, benchmark of, of performance because the more power you're using, the more performance you're pushing. So in the first half of this is all in laptop mode. So that is with the device just open like this, and you can see that it starts out going 100 watts, easy, 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 and then it suddenly kind of just drops and hits that 80 watt target and did that for about 10 minutes. And then this big jump in performance that you see here is when I moved it from laptop mode to tent or studio mode like this. And this gives you basically 120 watts rather than 100 watts. So you get a 20 watt boost by going to studio tent mode, as you can see here. And it kind of kicked around there. And you can see it is kind of throttling down a little bit, uh, but kind of just hangs out between 100 and 120. And again, this is a constant heavy load, so you would not expect it to to fade like this uh, in normal usage necessarily. You'd kind of see it uh, kind of bounce around and you should be between 100 watts and 120 watts like I said in my original video. So that information was good, but I, suddenly I was like, whoa, is this not right? But yeah, I ran this for 15 minutes, constant heavy load, and uh, yeah, it's able to push those power performance figures that I mentioned originally. So this graph underneath here is the GPU power. You can see uh, it pushed 80 watts for a while and then it dips and it, then it sticks around 60 watts. GPU only. This is the top one's system. This is GPU. And then when I, you open it up into, ta into tent studio mode, it really pops back up to 80 watts and then kind of cruises around. And I wanted to see what the GPU temperature looked like. So this is a GPU temperature graph. And you can see the cooling solution is pretty good because uh, it it goes up to 85. Uh, and at 88 is kind of the GPU max temp. And it does hit that, but it's also pulling close to 80 watts. And it's able to do that. I mean, 80 watts is a lot of power for a four pound device. So, so yeah, that those are my throttling benchmarks. Uh, some comparisons to some other devices that you can see here. Let's look at one more thing, and that is some comparisons between a 4060 versus a 4070. So if you're looking at like the Z13 and the X13 where you're like, oh, I can get a 4070 in this. Well, if you were hesitant to get the Laptop Studio 2 because it has a 4060 in it, uh, it's, it's not that big a deal, frankly, and I'll show you why. So if you look at I look at this graph right here, the time spy of a 4070 is represented represented by these green dots. And at the bottom, we're looking at watts that the GPU is configured to push. So um, in this example, you can see a 4070 at 55 watts gets an 8925 in time spy. But when you are pushing 100 watts, you get 12,000 in time spy. And then the blue lines are the 4060, the purple are the 4050. And what I don't have is I don't have an 80 watt 4050 number, which is what the 4050 version of the Laptop Studio 2 would be. Um, but where I'm going with this is you can see like my 4070 at 65 watt Z13 got a 9702 and my Surface Laptop Studio uh, with the 4060 also got a 9702, which is crazy. That's exactly the same number, but yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's what it ended up being. So yeah, an 80 watt 4060 is the same thing as a 65 watt 4070. So it still would have been really nice to get a 4070 in the laptop studio because it would have been more efficient. You would have been able to get that much more performance at 65, which means if you follow the curve of this graph, we could have probably got, you know, an 11 or 12K time spy with the 4070 with 80 watts. So that would have been nice, but it's not that big a deal. It's a smallish performance difference. So let's look and see where that puts us on like superposition. Uh, actually, I have no 80 watt benchmarks for those. So let's skip those. 
<laughs> we'll look at Final Fantasy. So Final Fantasy benchmark, uh, the 4070 at 80 watts, you know, would have gotten us close to 14,000, but instead we're getting uh, right around 12,000-ish. So yeah, 4070 would have been nice in the Laptop Studio too, but because it's an 80 watt rather than a 65 watt, it still puts the Laptop Studio 2 on par with the Z13 and the X13, in, and especially the Z13, because the X13 had a 60 watt limitation and they kind of fudged the numbers. It was really a 58 watt. I just like to call this 60 watt because it makes me feel better. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, uh, just some additional thoughts on the Laptop Studio 2. I'm still working on uh, additional information and tests with this. Uh, so far, I've noticed that the screen, I haven't, it. I have a Laptop Studio 1, and outside of HDR mode, the brightness looks almost exactly the same. Where the screen does look a little different on the Studio 2 is I can tell that it is more calibrated. Um, at least to my eye, it seems like the colors are a little more natural and they pop a little bit more. They see a little more vibrant, but that could just be uh, tolerances of the panel. Um, it's because I, I did hear someone say that in HDR mode, this does go to 600 nits. I heard that was the thing. So I haven't been able to test that yet, but that's on my, my list of things to do with this device. Uh, it's been nice having the USB-A port. Normally I had to get an adapter if I needed to use a, th a thumb drive for whatever reason. And yeah, uh, another thing I failed to mention in some of my other videos is in my speculation video, well, e well, not even speculation, Microsoft published a spec that said it was a 120 watt AC adapter it's not. It's the 127 watt adapter uh, that they've always used on the Surface Book 3, and it is 127 watts. And yes, I do know that the 7 watts on top of the 120 is for the USB A port on that uh, AC power brick. And I speculated maybe they took the AC, sorry, the USB A port off of that. They didn't. It's still there. It's the exact same one. You, if you have an old 127 watt power adapter, go ahead and use it because it's good. So yeah, if you have uh, anything you want me to respond to, this has been kind of a video to address the questions I've been getting in the comments. So hopefully this was useful. I'll be posting updates on my laptop studio too. So far, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and like I said, other than the issues I had today, it's been really good. It's it's actually surprising sometimes when I look at how much, <laughs> well, this, this four terabyte in here is more than I have on my OS drive on my desktop. And 64 gigs of RAM that I have in this is more than I have in my desktop too. So it's kind of weird when I look at task manager sometimes and I'm just like, holy cow, there is some real space slash memory in this thing that's, that's pretty outrageous. And that's why it's so expensive. So anyways, um, more to come later. Get subscribed up if you enjoy this content and we'll see you on the next one.